to the June 25th CONFAB, a uh, number of different things to go over today. You'll see the brief broadcast schedule, 970, the uh, website, obviously the easiest way to watch it at your convenience, and uh, there are the times listed for the brief broadcast on channel 970. The call-in number is 6304, so that's interesting. So some of you may know, and a lot of you, uh, some may not know, we are having telephone problems right now. Uh, well, I called some people in the dining room this morning, uh, some knew, some did not. Uh, last, uh, yesterday afternoon sometime, late afternoon, one of our Cisco components in our basement uh, went down. We originally thought we had a problem with Lumos, who provides our telephone services, and Mike Claus continues to work on that as he runs out. Um, <laughs> But uh, we figured out there was a problem later in the evening last night. So um, tried to get things out of 970. I sent an email out, I don't know, sometime around 9 or 10 when we knew what was going on. Uh, at this point in time, phone calls are not coming in or out to our campus. Uh, you can call the front desk. Your pendants are working. And um, you can, um, that's it. <laughs> so, and I'm sorry. So, uh, Mike got online, was talking with someone from Cisco, he said he was getting ready to uh, click and order it, and it was going to be in stock, and it would take 30 days to get here. Wow. So, he has found with one of the groups we work with out of Roanoke, we hope a solution, and we are hopeful that uh, we should have some or all of this phone system fixed by, we hope, noon today. Or we'll at least have someone uh, coming here with a solution that we think hopefully will get things up and running. So. Um, that's kind of where we stand with. But the call-in number will still work because everybody here is on campus and call in. But anyway, so your phones, we hope we'll have them back up and going as soon as we can. No robot calls. Paul, is that about right? That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> and I uh, can't thank Mike and Cliff and David enough with the IT team uh, here last night going through a lot of things. Uh, as you can imagine, they're also doing a lot of work in the new building, trying to get that ready, and uh, we appreciate all they're doing with that. So thank you. Also want to welcome, we have Susan Ackley here, Vice Chair, is sitting up front. Susan, if you just wave your hand, please. Uh, Susan's mother, Marion Galloway, lived with us a number of years ago, and a number of you probably also know Susan from doing taxes. I'm not sure if we have any other trustees in here. I see Jerry Bass back there and Jeff Wilson hiding behind us. So thank you for being here. All right, catch me at my best. We have Mabel and Annette. Either up here? There we go, Annette. Come on up. Annette provides exceptional care to the residents when transporting to and from appointments. I have the opportunity to see her in action every day, and she does a wonderful job. Annette Bates, congratulations. Come on up. All right, we have Mabel just got back here. Thank you, Annette. Mabel Austin. Mabel is always so pleasant and kind when she comes to my apartment. Her smile brightens my day. I'm appreciative of her and her positive attitude. She is an asset to the staff at Westminster Canterbury. Mabel Austin. Mabel has been with us for 34 years. We have a Sam in here. No Sam McBride? All right, so I'll do this and we'll give this to him later. So we have a piece of paper here. So the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War is a fraternal organization dedicated to preserving the history and legacy of heroes who fought and worked to save the Union. Organized in 1881, chartered by Congress in 1954, they are a legal successor to the Grand Army of the Republic. A non-governmental agency such as Westminster Canterbury that properly flies and displays the American flag is eligible for recognition of that effort by the 
Sons of the Union Veterans of the Civil War. After nomination, an SUVCW member reviews the agency for proper display of the flag at night, lowering for tribute and during inclement weather. We are proud to convey this honor, one of the first given nationally to Westminster Canterbury and those responsible for flag handling. Sam and group, thank you and congratulations. making a new mess yesterday so you're welcome I thought you guys would get uh, bored so we decided to do some more work um, so right now we're uh, cutting up the interior garage slab putting in a new pipe and uh, yep that's all I really have to say about that <laughs> uh, other than that doing a lot of cleanup um, punch punch items which is all the little stuff that is extremely tedious to finish up so we love all that stuff and then Nick and I are doing a lot of paperwork which is really awesome and we could go into that but I don't want to go into it I don't even want to do it but we've got to people like to get paid I guess so that's pretty much what's going on Thursday big opening um, we're super proud of what we've we've accomplished here so I hope you guys like what you see and we'll see you on Thursday Nick do you have anything yeah if you're wondering what those a couple of guys doing uh, hanging on the side of the building they're cleaning the windows <laughs> we, we finally got those guys out here we've been struggling to get out here but hopefully they'll be done in the next few days questions all right I think we'll be hanging off of that thing later today responsibilities of the wellness committee is to uh, encourage participation in the programs that are offered by the wellness staff. Uh, our certified instructors offer a variety of fitness exercises numbering roughly 22 a week. Uh, I'm going to highlight a few of these activities uh, to promote awareness. So if you're interested, I'm also going to tell you how you can get started on these. I'll start with our newly renovated uh, wellness center, telling you about that. Uh, the pool also is a venue for some of those classes and fun games as well. And you do not have to do anything prior to attending any of those uh, <coughs> classes that you see listed in your weekly calendar just feel free to come and participate. Uh, you're only asked if you were please sign in uh, on the sheet that's inside the pool area. That's to give staff numbers so they can work with that. There are locker rooms um, <coughs> in the area and towels are provided, so just come and have fun. Next to the pool is the studio where other exercise classes are held. Again, there's nothing to do but just to come and enjoy when you see a class that you feel like uh, would be beneficial to you. Across the hall is the gym with state-of-the-art um, equipment. The staff does ask if you will contact them before starting to use the equipment, and I'm, when I say staff, I mean Kim and uh, Denise. Uh, they like to go over the equipment with you before you start using it, particularly the new HUR, H-U-R, equipment. So that's going to take us outside. I want to talk to you about the soulmates. There have been 27 walks scheduled for this year. Uh, some of those are on campus, uh, 
local, such as Percival Island and Blackwater Creek, and some are in neighboring counties. Uh, you do not have to be a fast walker or a long distance walker to enjoy this. Everyone walks at their own pace. There's an hour allotted for um, the walk. And so what the rule is kind of 30 minutes out and then turn around and head back just in case, uh, oh, wait, to, to get back to the bus. Um, the only thing I might just caution about is um, when you're first starting, the trails are of various uh, levels of difficulty. Uh, Denise has those <coughs> descriptions and it may be helpful to you to, to know which ones you want to select uh, to, to utilize. They, uh, that's about it for the walking club. I think you would enjoy it. Um, there's just something for everyone there, I think. Now that's going to bring us to uh, one of our programs that uh, we have had this year. <clears throat> one of our committee members suggested that we do a series on fall prevention and awareness. And that program was started in, uh, there's been six in that series, and it, they were started in early March. Uh, one of our members actually started the series by presenting um, a program on his own experience with falls and giving us um, lessons learned, so to speak, from his experience. Then it ended with Dr. Freeman, um, neurologist and uh, movement specialist from UVA. He described how they assess persons coming to them who have experienced frequent falls. But that will not be the end of <clears throat> the fall uh, programs presented. It is a national problem. It is a growing problem. So there will be more. I was reading in the newspaper earlier this month, there are 25,000 deaths annually as a result from falls in the older population. So there will be more <clears throat> programs on that. The American Medical Association's um, response to this uh, phenomenon is that there be more classes on uh, strength, muscle strength, and balance. And we're awfully fortunate here at WC to already have those classes in place, and all we have to do is just take advantage of those. That's the end of my commercial. Uh, <laughs> so um, I just want you to meet your committee. Feel free, we are your committee and feel free to approach any of us with <clears throat> excuse me, any suggestions or questions that you may have related to wellness. Thank you. to uh, make you aware of some opportunities for next month. Um, we will have a movie matinee here in the Commons on July the 8th at 2 o'clock. The movie is uh, on the basis of sex. It is the story of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. So I think that it's relatively new. I don't know if anyone has seen that, but we'll um, show that in here 2 o'clock on July the 8th. Um, we also will have a book signing, and that is going to be July the 11th. 2 o'clock in the Hume, uh, Don Garlock Jr. He is a local author who has uh, written a book titled Vigilance. It is the story of the Bedford County Sheriff's Office. I have some flyers I'll put in the elevator if anybody is interested in coming to that. It should be interesting. Um, starting at the end of July, on the 29th, every Monday at 2 o'clock, um, we will uh, start a documentary series called Our Planet. So I don't know if anyone has uh, seen that. It is on Netflix. It's an eight-part documentary series, and each part is about an hour long. So um, we'll show that every Monday at 2, starting July 29th. We will continue at Downton Abbey for the month of July. We're starting season five, so we're going to roll right through. We only have six seasons, so we're almost to the end. Um, I'm still working on Hillcats baseball games. So just check your weekly for the dates on that. Um, I'll get that into as soon as I can. So we'll try to get in a couple of games for the end of the summer. Creative writing group. So I just finalized this this morning, some dates. 
So next Tuesday, July the 2nd, um, I know we're off with our dates and times, but 10 o'clock in the billiards room, we will meet and also August the 6th. It is a Tuesday as well, 345 in the Hume room. So it'll be a different day, but the same time for the August date. And I think that's all. Does anyone have any questions for me? Yes, ma'am. Who hid the crown? <laughs> you can blame that on Netflix. They have not released uh, season three yet. We do have season three of Victoria that we can start after Downton Abbey is complete, if people are interested in that. But um, Netflix has not released season three, and there's no word on a release date. So I'll let you know as soon as I know. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Fine Arts Committee will present Dr. Wesley Baldwin in concert tomorrow, which is Wednesday, June the 26th at 7 p.m. in the Commons. And on Sunday, July the 28th, the, the Dyer String Quartet will be in concert at 3 p.m. in the Commons. Bank of the James will present End Station with a sneak peek of My Way a musical tribute to Frank Sinatra on Friday, June 28th at 11 a.m. in the Commons. Join cast members of this summer's production as they perform several pieces from his career. <clears throat> Join us Monday, July 1st at 7 p.m. in the Commons for the documentary Independence Day, The History of July 4th. Throughout America, the 4th of July is a summer celebration, but how did these traditions begin? From the Continental Congress to the explosions that light up the skies nationwide, the History Channel presents an affectionate look at Independence Day. A Clinique rep representative from Belk will be here on Tuesday, July 2nd from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the Activities and Programs Room to offer an array of cosmetics for purchase. She will take your order that morning, go to Belk to fill the order, and then return that afternoon for you to pick up your purchase. Join us on Tuesday, July 9th at 7 p.m. in the Commons for Conspiracy, Uncover the World's Best Kept Secrets, Part 9 and 10. Part 9 is the CIA and the Nazis, and Part 10 is Jack Ruby. <clears throat> Excuse me. Trips this month, this coming month, will include the Academy Center of the Arts with Amy Grant on Sunday, July 14th. Lunch Bunch on Tuesday, July 16th. In Station Theater on Thursday, July the 18th. The Academy Center of the Arts with Taj Mahal on Saturday, July 27th and the Academy Center with Brian McKnight on Sunday, July 28th. For more detailed information and other programs, please see your weekly and monthly newsletters, TV 970, and the resident website. Does anyone have any questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, he is a pianist. Any other questions? <coughs> Okay, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. The wellness resident of the month is Cremora Ayers, so when you see Cremora, be sure and congratulate her and see her information on the display board down in the Wellness and Fitness Center. Some reminders for this week. Um, our massage therapist is here today, Marcia Mickles. Um, she's here every other Tuesday. And then Cameo Hoyle is here every Thursday afternoon for massage as well. So keep that in mind and be sure and uh, sign up for your massages at the Wellness Board located in the lobby. Uh, Dr. Charles Driscoll will be presenting the Civil War Lecture tomorrow dressed in scarlet, the ambulatory hospital 
at 11 a.m. in the Commons. And one other thing this week, um, the Rock and Roll Cyber Cycle Challenge is this week. It started um, on Sunday, but you can still um, join in on that. It's Rock, Roll, and Ride for 90 minutes this week, 90 minutes or more. That's the challenge. Um, if you're already signed in on the Cyber Cycle, you just go in and do, um, it includes anything and everything that you do on the Cyber Cycle. For those who have not started on the Cyber Cycle, if you want to join the challenge, you still can. Just come to me and I'll get you signed up for that. Um, and we can go with the challenge and that ends on Sunday, this coming Sunday. There will be more challenges through the year on that Cyber Cycle as well. And join the Wellness Department for, in July for essential oil meetings with Becky Nelson. Uh, the Soulmates Walking Club has a red, white, and blue campus walk. On, we also have Holiday Lake State Park we'll be going to, having lunch at the Babcock House. And we also have a walk at the Blackwater Creek Trail. And you would sign up for all of those walks on the Wellness um, Board as well. Line dancing is every Monday. Um, in the Drinkard day room, and Dancing with Parkinson's is every Wednesday afternoon in the Wellness Studio. Um, at long last, Women's Roundtable is back. Ashley, Jarrett, and Susan Forner, PTs with Senior Independence, um, will be um, having a Women's Roundtable this uh, in July um, on osteoporosis for you ladies. Our Civil War and History Series lecture this month in July, I should say, uh, will be presented by Mark Day. The lecture is entitled Adventures in the Civil War Navy. Uh, for the Parkinson Support Group meeting in July at the summit, we will leave at 1.30 p.m. on Tuesday, July 16th, and the bus will be at the front entrance. We will begin weekend outdoor games in July as well. Um, there's been a lot of interest in that, so start, starting July 6th, every Saturday and Sunday evening, beginning at 6 p.m., the games will be outdoors on the terrace lawn. Um, the games will include um, shuffleboard, croquet, yard darts, and cornhole. Um, so everyone join in starting July 6th each weekend, weather permitting. Our 9 a.m. Staying Strong class um, has really grown. It, we're packed in the wellness studio, which is a good thing. So we will be adding an 8.30 a.m. class as well, same class, Staying Strong to take overflow um, at, on Mondays and Wednesdays at 8.30 a.m. every week, beginning in July, starting July 1st. Uh, we have lots of other things going on as usual, so be sure and sign up for all of our um, events and everything at the Wellness Board and see more detailed information on our, the rest of our programs in your monthly newsletter, weekly updates, as well as in-house TV and resi our resident website. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. July we're going to be doing something that I'm calling Christmas without the stress. Um, so starting July 21st we'll be uh, ushering in a week of Christmas celebrations without all the uh, cost or chaos that sometimes is uh, connected to Christmas. So on Sunday we'll have the worship service that is affiliated with uh, Christmas themes. On Monday we'll be watching a Christmas themed uh, movie at 2 o'clock here in the Commons. On Tuesday, we'll be decorating Christmas cookies. We'll be doing some crafts and uh, playing some Christmas carols. Uh, Wednesday is the blood drive, uh, and it's not really Christmas-oriented, but I thought, you know, it kind of goes with the theme of giving, right? So uh, please, if you're eligible and willing, please come uh, donate blood. We'll also be doing a service project that will continue uh, through the rest of the school year. We're going to be taking on... Um, Packing the backpack uh, food program for kids who um, some of them go home on Fridays and don't eat again until they come back to school on Monday morning. Um, so there have been a number of programs that have been started in the community to um, pack some food in the child's backpack so that when they go home they have food to eat over the weekend and especially over holidays. Um, and so we're going to be participating in that um, on a weekly basis but we're also going to boost that food pantry stock 
and we're going to put the Christmas sleigh, Santa sleigh, on the bridge starting July 1st, and we will remove it on uh, Christmas Day, July 25th. Um, there are, or there is a display of all the items that we're asking for, particularly we're asking for individually sized items. So um, uh, ravioli, macaroni and cheese, fruit cups, granola bars, pretzels in the little individual bags, things like that. Um, and the display is sitting outside of the chapel right now on the second floor. Um, so if you're interested in um, donating to that worthy project, please take a look at that display. Uh, next time you go to the grocery store, please uh, pick up a few items that are on the list. And if you need a list, I'm going to be putting that in the newsletter, in the weekly newsletter. And there are also shopping lists on the table outside of the chapel. Um, so this will be a, a, a worthy project for us to participate in. You know, uh, food pantries get lots and lots of donations in the wintertime, in November, December. Um, and then it kind of peters off, and so all the food pantries are um, looking at empty shelves right now. So we're going to uh, take care of that with them. Um, I think it's on Thursday, correct me if I'm wrong, Denise, we're going to do the Jingle Bell Walk around campus. So anybody who wants a Jingle Bell of their own, uh, come and we'll get some exercise at the same time. And then on Friday, we're going to have a snowball volleyball pool game. Um, so if you like pool volleyball, and you miss snowball fights, we're going to try to combine the two and have some fun in the pool on Friday. Um, so please find me, join me uh, that week, and we'll have a little fun. Um, also know that Bible study will be discontinued after July 1st until September 9th. We're going to take a little summer break um, so I can refocus my energies over in the new building for a little while. Um, so after July 1st, no Bible study in the chapel at 1015 on Mondays until September 9th, and then we'll pick that back up again. Um, finally, we're going to start another grief support group starting on Thursday, August 1st. It will be in the chapel. Um, it will be 11 weeks in a row, and we'll be meeting from 3 to 5. I will be putting notices in your mailboxes with a sign-up um, available for you. So if you're interested in participating in that or know somebody who would benefit from being a part of a grief support group, please pass that information along to them. Thank you. Any questions? How's everyone? Um, just a couple of things. Just a reminder, the 4th of July reservation book, um, we're going to pull it in today so we can start placing orders and assigning tables. So it's out here right outside the library. If you haven't made your reservations, um, please do that and we'll, do, we'll pull it in sometime late this afternoon. Um, just a reminder that the cafe is going to close a little bit early today at 2.30 for our monthly staff meeting. So we'll be closing the cafe. We'll reopen at 4.30 as usual for dinner. Um, for those of you who joined us in the Dogwood Dining Room or the James River Grill Friday night after social hour, um, we tried something new. Because we get such a crush of folks, which is great, um, all at the same time, it's a little overwhelming for the servers and for the kitchen, but we did the um, prefix dinner offering. We did some specials. Um, at a set price, and um, we heard a lot of really great compliments. Um, ticket times were great. It worked really well for the servers and for the kitchen, and I think the residents that I spoke to really enjoyed it. So um, we're going to try it again during the next social hour evening um, and see how that goes. Um, the regular menu was also offered, so you could order off the regular menu if you preferred, but we had some really great specials, so a lot of folks picked that. So. Thank you. And uh, the last thing I have is um, we're starting to work on the next edition of the Dining News, our little newsletter that we put out. So if anyone has any ideas, suggestions, thoughts about anything that they'd like to see in there as far as an article or little factoids or tidbits, um, please let me know. I'd appreciate any input. That's it for me. Any questions? Anyone? Ask me.
the attendance for the Sunday brunch has dropped off. I, I have no control over who comes and doesn't come. I, I, don't, I don't know why it's dropped off. A lot of times in the summer, people are traveling or they're out and about, they're doing things, they're not here. So we do notice a drop in attendance across the board in the summer. So that, that could be it. Any other questions for me? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? I love this picture. I went zip lining in Costa Rica once. It was fabulous. I'd love to do it again. Anywhere, actually. Um, this week is such a wonderful week. It's a, it's a week for celebration. It's a week for saying thank you. And I have many big thanks to give to all of you because we met and exceeded our gift match challenge for Mission 2020. So give your hands up. You are all such wonderful contributors, so thoughtful, so generous. Uh, as you might recall, the match challenge was for gifts up to $20,000 that were made basically from the beginning of April through the end of this month. I am here to tell you that we have met and exceeded it to the point that we have raised 48,600 additional dollars for this campaign. And that's thanks to all of you. Thank you so very much. As another part of our celebration, you will be, you, and you've probably seen already, we had um, a team of fellows yesterday working in our lobby in this building, uh, installing a sign. Well, it's not complete. We had some problems. Uh, which will be fixed. Unfortunately, they won't be fixed until next week. So, uh, it's going to stay the way it is for now, but we will get it corrected. Uh, we are also going, we have already installed the Mission 2020 campaign sign uh, in the new building to commemorate all of the donors for that effort, as well as to recognize our individual special donors who made significant gifts to that campaign and are uh, having naming opportunities related to various spaces. So when y'all come to the open house on Thursday, you'll be able to see all of that and appreciate uh, all of the contributions that have been made. It's very exciting. I'm so excited. I can't stand it. Um, all that to say, currently, uh, our campaign total is $2,230,000, $230,068. So that's where we are right now. Thanks to all of you. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, next thing, just wanted to remind you, uh, you've been seeing and hearing about uh, buddy, meeting buddies for next month to help um, transition into the new building. In, on the back page of your weekly newsletter, you'll see an article about that, gives you a little more details about uh, what the needs are and what the training is all about. The training's coming up on July 2nd. It will be from 2 to 4 o'clock, and it will be in this room. Uh, we've had a, a great response, and uh, we'll need everybody's uh, help to make that day uh, go successful in support of our health services team. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, let's see. Thursday. The big day. This week. All right. Our dedication event is Thursday. Um, I am very sorry that we can't fit everyone in the space, in the new building. My idea had been to have everybody in there together. Well, it didn't work. Uh, the space really only holds about 110 people. Well, the important people to be in that building are going to be the people who live there. So that's our healthcare folks and their family members. So we made the decision to have them be the primary folks in the building during the actual event. That's why we have um, sought out with the help of Cliff McRae, Mike Kloss, uh, David Reeves, a way to live stream the event to this screen. So you can sit in here in comfort, watch, have it be a party, and we really want it to be a party. It is a party. Think of it as 
um, the Super Bowl or baseball playoffs or the Stanley Cup where your special team is playing in the final game to win the championship but they're playing away so you can't be there so you go to the stadium with all of the other fans and you celebrate and you cheer with them when they win which is what St. Louis did when they won the Stanley Cup so anyway you can see what I've been watching recently so that, that's the game plan. And again, very sorry that we can't have everyone in the building simultaneously to be involved, but we will have programs for everyone. You'll be here, you'll be able to see everything. Uh, but I do ask that you pray that our technology works. <laughs> technology has not been my friend, as you know. So just say a special prayer that our technology works and that the live streaming all is integrated from the cameras and you'll be able to see everything going on. Okay? Can you do that for me? <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Um, if you ch if you choose not to join the group and you still want to watch, it will be on channel 970. So if you don't feel up to it that day, you don't want to join the group, that's okay. You can watch in your apartment or your cottage. Um, we will also be recording it. We'll probably play it later on as well. So we will have it for posterity. Uh, again, though, just as a reminder, after the ceremony itself is over, please come over to the building around, I would ask if you would come, try to come after 11, simply because with the folks who are going to be in the building, we're going to need to get them off the second floor and kind of up into the spaces so that we don't have a bottleneck of everybody rushing over there and have 300 people who want to use the elevators all at once. So if you could just kind of come after 11, it's going to go till 2 o'clock. So if you have a commitment that morning, and you have to go out or off campus or do an errand, please do that and then come back. We will, we will be glad to have you come, come through. There will be light refreshments, uh, thanks to Michael and his team, uh, throughout the spaces. So we won't have anybody getting thirsty or needing a snack. It'll all be right there in place. Um, again, uh, looking forward to it. Looking forward to having all of you come over and, and walk through and see what a beautiful space it is. I think you'll be very pleased. Any questions for me? Yes, Margaret. Uh, Lenny, is this new structure forever wait, can can on as the new building? <laughs> no, actually, and Sean is going to speak to that when he speaks next. I'll let him share that with you. <laughs> I don't want to steal his thunder, you know. Yes, Ken. As regards the training you mentioned. Yes, sir. Will there be a makeup day for those who cannot possibly be there on that Tuesday afternoon? I am not aware of one at this time. Um, I will ask that question of June McNamara, who was our social worker for uh, health care services, and see uh, what she's able to accommodate. I'm, I'm kind of the liaison for her, but I will ask. All right. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Have a good day. All right. So sometime Friday or Saturday, these balloons were delivered to the administrative office. Um, Thank you to whoever did that. And uh, this note here says, in celebration of our new building from the bodacious old, old broad. <laughs> Paul Shelton and I disagree on the meaning of bodacious. Um, there may be a person or two in here that we've speculated could have done this. Um, you want to just tell me later so I can personally say thank you. I'd appreciate it. We figured we'd share the balloons with everybody. So thank you. Got a kick out of that. I don't refer to anyone by that. So um, Okay, so um, I've got a number of things I'll just try to knock off. The first one is the Hollerin's uh, engagement survey. Uh, you should have received a letter in the last week uh, talking about the survey so that when you see it, you don't throw it away and think it's junk mail. But uh, we've worked with Holleran for two other survey cycles now and uh, look forward to getting your feedback. 
Uh, if you are a couple, you will both get a uh, survey form to fill out um, and would ask you to please do that in a timely manner. We really look forward to getting that feedback. We can benchmark that to the other two surveys we've done as well as other organizations across the country. That should start Monday. When we talk about going over to the new building and the 300 people that want to take the elevators, remember uh, to my friends that I do see on the stairs, uh, the stairs do work as well. The third floor will look just like the fourth, fifth, and sixth floors. There are different colors, but the layout of the rooms, the building, uh, the floor, all very, very similar. So if you're in a rush and you see a crowd and you see the stairwell, please feel free to use it. <laughs> I continue to work after nine years. I'm worried I'm going to send someone back down the stairs as I'm in a rush and run down the stairs. And uh, thank you for all of you that watch out for me. So uh, I continue to try to get better with that. Know that the building is uh, still in the process, as Lauren talked about, being uh, finished. There's punch list items. Uh, there's a lot of heavy work and still construction going on under the building over the next couple of days. Uh, there are marks on walls with blue pieces of tape and other things, and there's a decent amount of work that still needs to be done. So um, just be cognizant of that. So uh, John Craddock and the EVS crew, along with people from other departments, have put a lot of time in cleaning this up, getting it ready. Uh, we're still waiting for the fire marshal, and uh, we wanted to make sure that we were able to get you in with actually out having people living there. Just the idea of walking through people's homes and touring around was something we did not want to do. So we wanted to try to get you in. And it looks like timeline uh, Thursday is going to be just about the right time for doing that. Could have picked a better time. Now we just need the fire marshal to come back and get us all in <laughs> compliance. So we're working on that. But I think you'll see the building, uh, it's very big, a lot of space, a lot of natural light. Uh, I think it's beautiful and I look forward to getting you in there to see it. Look forward to moving people in on the 16th and 17th of July and uh, having everyone in. So I um, hope you'll enjoy Thursday and, and all of this time going forward. So the question about the name of the healthcare building, obviously a very important week as we dedicate the building. Um, and some of you may be aware, I heard a little conversation yesterday that we are going to call the new building the Drinkard Building. And uh, there's a couple of thoughts behind that. Obviously, Debbie and her team have been great with fundraising $2.2 million, and a lot of you have been very involved in that. We appreciate that. But at the same time, we did not have a donor come forward and place a name on the building. So uh, we were left with kind of calling it the new healthcare building, or what we would call it. Um, We've had some discussions with some uh, parts of the, uh, with the board, uh, with staff. We're going to vacate two thirds of this building, and um, just felt like with all the people moving, uh, the drinker name really been tied in with healthcare for the past 40 years, and uh, feel like to honor uh, Mr. and Mrs. Drinker with is uh, what is what uh, one of the largest gifts we've ever received. Uh, we felt like it was right to move that building over and place the drink, sorry, move the drinker name to the new building. So what does the old drinker building become? I don't have an answer for that yet. Uh, there's a possibility that we do some different stuff with assisted living. I don't believe we need more assisted living rooms here. Uh, no matter what happens, we will work on renovating assisted living. But um, there's also potential that we would have possibly independent living in the old drinker building. And we believe it's very important from a marketing standpoint that if it was something new, that it has a new name with it and that it just doesn't have that connotation of being healthcare. So um, we're working with a consultant right now, uh, the same one we worked with, which is our auditor for a feasibility study as we look at options of how do we uh, work numbers, if it's gonna be more assisted living or larger assisted living, if it's gonna be independent living or if there's anything else we're not aware of, we're working through those feasibility studies. We'll then work more with our staff and discussions with our board, and when we know exactly what we think it's gonna look like, we'll share that with you. So that is where we stand with the name Drinker Building and the new healthcare building being Drinker. Any questions? All right. We have a board slide. So I realized that um, when we changed trustees or had our annual meeting in February, I 
uh, shared with resident council and put into the minutes this slide, but did not share it up here in front of all of you. So as we mentioned, we have Susan Ackley here today as vice chair, Nancy Brockman as chair. New trustees that we welcomed on board were Dr. Bob Lockridge, Ann McVeigh, and Liz Zellner. And then trustees rotating off the board were Dr. Bill Gale, Pam Bradford, and Martin Tolhook. So just for your information there. Again, talking about tele uh, telephones, we hope that we'll have this issue fixed today sometime around noon. We will share, uh, we'll share that with everyone, try to get some notices up, have it on the TV, website, and um, I'll send out another email when I get back to my office. Uh, if something changes, we'll also share that uh, change uh, altered timeline if that becomes an issue. We believe we have an agreement with humankind uh, but because it hasn't been signed yet, we can't share details of that. So we hope it will be signed in the next week, uh, 10 days. <laughs> have no indication that it will not be. But when we have details and have it all signed, we will share that with you. And then lastly, uh, it would have been nice to have had this phone problem last night and have it followed up with Verizon cell phones working. Because I know there are a number of people through our survey that have Verizon but um, we are still waiting for Verizon. They're not giving us a timeline. But if you were to go down under the bridge, look back towards the main entrance, there was a big hole in the ground uh, up at the Brookhaven wall. You would see that uh, work is being done as they are trying to pull a line into the building. Again, we have all of our infrastructure built out to push that Verizon signal through the campus and the main building as well as outside towards the cottages. So. Uh, they still don't give us a date of when they think that will be completed, um, but they are working on that. So I'm hopeful, I'd like to say a couple of days, a week, hope it's not a month, but uh, anyway, we are at their mercy at this point. Uh, U.S. Cellular is active, AT&T is active. Uh, we realize that for some people that have AT&T that may not have a contract directly through AT&T and may have um, some of these different talk um, phone programs that there are some phones that are not working and picking up the signal as other AT&T phones are so we're trying to also uh, increase and boost that signal or create that signal so that uh, we can try to reach as many people as possible with cell phones and get this situation fixed so I really hope that we are close to a solution here and with that I think that concludes my report oh Yes, if you could. Just a quick little shot of uh, our video that's on the website, if we can get it to work, but it kind of shows the time lapse of where we started, and um, just need to see 18, 20 months ago, we still had dirt in the ground and working on a parking lot. If you'd like to see this again, I believe it is on the resident website. You can view it there. <laughs> Any questions? We have one up here. Uh, what? Yes, you want to come up here? Come on up. You've seen me around in my work clothes around the campus and my concern is the condition of the gardens and the preservation of the gardens I was recently at a, the Carolina Meadows in, in Chapel Hill North Carolina and I was so impressed when you drive on that campus it is 
go with Gideon. And I think that's something we ought to strive for here at Westminster Canterbury. It just makes you feel good. But one of the issues that I have is that um, we have some uh, damage from the dogs in, in, the, in the flower beds. And there's a rule that says that we're to, we're to keep the pet under the strain of the owner. Well, to me, if a dog is getting in a, in a flower bed, it sounds like the dog is controlling the person instead of the person controlling the dog. And, there's a, and then um, it says that the dogs are not permitted in the flower beds. Now this is in our rule book. We're not doing a lot of revamping of the gardens. We're trying to salvage the plants that we have and re, re, replacing them. But one of the big issues is if you're outside the marketing area, the, do, the uh, boxwoods have been decimated. If you look how the dogs have literally peed on the boxwoods. <laughs> and there's no way that, um, I mean, I just think that the owner has to control a dog when they go through there and, and not either go that way or go somewhere else. And it's very important in the front, front part of the uh, building because this is where everybody comes. The marketing people come. That's an entrance for us. And, and then we've got the new building, and I hope that we're not going to get into the beds with the new building. So I'm making a plea to please, uh, when you're walking your dogs, keep them out of the flower beds. Even down on the nature trail, uh, in, in the new flower, native, uh, natural flower bed um, that we have down there. There are boxwoods in the, actually that were planted in the bed and they've been peed on. Now there are many, many uh, posts down there that the dog can use. <laughs> so uh, I think we just have to be more aware of, of our campus and and be proud of it because a lot of us are working to, to make it beautiful but we need a lot of help from you people so anyway this is my concern and I hope that y'all will work with us to because there's a lot going to be happening in the fall with some uh, working on plants and uh, uh, we're trying to salvage what we have and it's going to be exciting so um, especially around the marketing area so Anyway, I probably made some enemies today, but there are more people than there are dogs. <laughs> Thank you, Fran. Good public service reminder. Question. With no authority whatsoever, I'm here to present an extra award. Twice now, I have been in the presence of CEOs of similar organizations, senior living communities, neither of which was a Westminster candidate. I asked them if they know Sean Hewitt. Their faces light up. They tell me what a really good guy he is. <laughs> and I try not to look too smug. <laughs> Sean is a leader in Leading Age, the organization that he can explain better than I can, but it oversees similar groups. So Sean, with only glory, and gratitude and nothing else, no brass plaques, maybe some cookies the next time I bake. I'm here to declare Sean Hewitt as a thoroughly good guy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Charles. Um, you too can get a 50% discount on your monthly service fees. <laughs> Jerry, let's just do away with everything she just said. Thank, thank you. But there is a lot. There are 415 people that work here. And uh, boy, this week has taught me that we need every single one of them. So 
thank you, but uh, I do it on their behalf. And uh, what has happened upstairs and getting the building ready has been nothing short of spectacular. So thank you, but uh, it belongs to the other 414. Gary. Like your Hugh Miller. Yeah, I'll follow that. Uh, <laughs> all praise falling forth from the group, that's all. But I'll talk to you about the other things later. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? I thank you for your time today, and I look forward to seeing everyone on Thursday. Have a good day.